God is good. I just feel like I, I don't think it's just me, but I feel the breath of God in, in the service, in the church. I just feel the spirit, I feel the, you know, the inspiration in my bones, <laughs> fire in my bones. I don't know how to explain it. I'm enjoying Jesus so much. I'm enjoying in my life so much, and I'm it's true what they say, that in the spirit, the more you chow or the more you eat, um, the more you want to eat, the more you, you, want, the more you drink, the more you, you want to drink. You know, it's, it's like, you know, the problem with being hungry in the natural is that you go to spur, you know, you remember like you have these um, bottomless ribs or something like that. You think you're going to eat the whole night, and then you, you go and you're like, after two rubs, you, you're done. Unless you bring like a bucket or something where you can pack the stuff in and take it home with you. But it's, and then you're like disappointed. You thought, yeah, I, could, I thought I could eat so much more. Well, in the spirit, it's different. You eat, and then you can eat more and more and more. <laughs> and uh, so it's both. So, um, so this is the air I breathe. It's your holy presence living in me. So people, I've, I've um, desired, wanted revival my whole life, whatever you call it. I've been in revivals. I know what it's like. God, God, God wants to give a remaining forever permanent revival, and that's ours. And so when I look at the church, I said this on Friday night for those who miss it, I see revival. More of you will see it and say amen and say yes. I see revival. I see everything that we've been praying for happening now. I can see it. I can experience it in my life. I, I know it's here. I mean, there's people here that we've been praying for to be here. They're coming. They're here. They're climbing on board. They're running with us. Um, come on, Fitz Colquick. We've been praying for years, man. You know, yes, I'm by faith. I'm saying it's happening. You know, if you if you take a a a, 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 a small tree and you or a, or let's take an apple seed. You know that saying it says anyone count the amount, can count the amount of seeds in the apple, but only God knows the amount of apples in a seed. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I think I really feel like. Like we're in like seed form in the sense we're growing now. We're an uh, apple tree. <laughs> and although it's small, it's the same thing. As whatever you want to see and call revival and call a move of God, it might be small now, but it is a move of God. <laughs> and if we steward it and we look after it and we love it and we cherish it, and um, uh, it doesn't matter how big it is, right now is special, right now is important, and... Uh, yeah, so um, today I'm not going to give you a lesson on how to be successful. I'm not going to give you uh, how to have a blessed marriage. I'm not going to give you, because everything is fruit of abiding in Jesus. If you're abiding, like if you have a marriage issue, it's, it's not a marriage issue, it's a lordship issue. <laughs> Come on. If you have a, whatever issue it is, so today you say, Lord, I put all the issues aside. Occasionally I have to go and I have to watch my own teachings and listen to myself say things like this. Because it's very important for me to hear that I don't have an issue. <laughs> I, have a, I just, when, when, hello, hello. when we, <laughs> when you abide in him, everything else is, yeah, hello, <laughs> is fruit. And, and everything is fruit, and everything um, is a result of abiding in Jesus. Amen? So we've been speaking about that on uh, men's meeting. So yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll carry on. Good, let's get started. So we're in um, 1 Corinthians. Let's do 1 Corinthians and start there and carry on there. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for um, the life you breathe. Um, 
on your word. The Bible says that every word from God, every scripture is inspired by God, is God-breathed. And uh, so we will hear what the Spirit says, and we will, we will, yeah, and we'll bear fruit in our lives. Amen. So don't be scared to say amen. Don't be scared to say yes, I agree. Don't be scared to throw money. Don't be scared to do any of those things. Preach with me. Enjoy the service with me. Burn with me. Let's go for it. 1 Corinthians, I said 12, let's do 13. Ah, And we'll do a little bit of catching up from last week. He says, verse 12, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12, Now we're looking in a mirror that gives only a dim reflection, but then when perfection comes, we shall see in reality and face to face. So God is bringing us from from seeing in part to seeing in person. Come on, seeing the full picture. God wants you to see the full picture. God is growing us, maturing us into the full picture. Okay, I said last week, but I repeat, you have got a calling for sure. We sing Amazing Grace that saved the rich. Like me, and then for the rest of the song, me, 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 me. But it's actually, it's saved the rich like you, like you, like you, like you. And we, when we reflect and we actually see, but grace saves us all, we begin to understand that it's not just about me. I'm, I am called in a, in a corporate calling. I play a role in the body of Christ. How many of you guys know that God's calling for your life is not just to give you a good career so that you're in the right career and you live a fruitful life? No, it's part of what God is doing in the body, corporately. Wow. And so when we begin to understand, like I think it's Proverbs, it says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children, his children's children, etc., etc., is that we, sometimes we get so distracted and so tunnel-visioned and narrow-minded by what God wants to do with me. And God is actually trying to say, hey, 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 if you actually see what I want to do through the many. That's why, um, you know, when people start preaching against church, I don't understand it. You know, like, people go to church, preach against church. My life was dramatically changed in church. Something happened when I came together with people. A word of God came. The Spirit, uh, how does it say, inhabits our praises. Yes, it doesn't matter where you do it, but God, where there's unity, God commands a blessing, God moves. Like in a place like this, I'm telling you, where we come together, you're going to see so much more for your life. So much more. You've got so much to give. You have got so much to give. You are a gift in the body of Christ. Amen. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I did last week just to, to remind and to re- remind you. Can, does anyone want to play Jesus for me? Anyone? Can I have Jesus? Come take it. Okay. So this time, this time I represent you. Teku is Jesus. Okay, my, my job, quickly go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, I think it's verse 18. If we can read it there quickly. And all of us, say all of us, not just me, all of us with unveiled face, Okay, that's speaking about um, uh, the, the unveiled face is it's like self-righteousness. You, you're getting rid of self-righteousness. All of us with an unveiled face, because we continue to behold, okay, now the brackets there, it says in the Word of God, it's not really there, it's an example. It's also the Word of God, but it's not just the Word of God. As in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are constantly being transfigured into His very own image in ever-increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another. So when I always read this, I saw, okay, there is Teku, and I, um, okay, no, 
There is Jesus, excuse me, and Bruce is now looking at Jesus. And uh, do you have um, King James? You don't have you don't have the Passion Translation there or the Net. What do you have? Put the Passion Translation on. They just put a different spin on it. We can all draw close to Him with the veil removed from our faces. And with no veil, we all, we become like mirrors. You see, that, that puts it nicely. Who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord. We are being transfigured. Okay, again, we are being transfigured into his very image as we move from one brighter level of glory to another. So I'm looking at Jesus. And while I'm looking at him, there's a reflection that's happening. But... Uh, as long as I think I'm called for me, 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 it's just me and Jesus. God has called us to be like a mirror. And so what happens is, tell me, who do you see? Do you see anyone? You see the people. Uh, we stand there. Can you see Gareth? I think so. Gareth, do you see Jesus? <laughs> What happens is, my job now is, as I'm looking to Jesus, if I take what is given to me in the face of Christ, and I reflect it to Gareth, he looks, and what is he doing? He's seeing Jesus, but he's seeing in part. Okay? He's he's seeing, it's Jesus in part, in a sense. Listen, I must be very careful with what what I'm saying, but I really believe this is, This is accurate. Now, uh, if, for example, Shamim had to come stand next to me, I don't have another mirror. But if she did the same thing, you see also a grace that is revealed to Shamim that is revealed to you. And that is really what it is. Until the body of Christ can, can understand that we're called to act together. And we're called to reveal the Christ and that you have a gift to give and you have grace on your life to give. We're going to stop coming to church to see somebody else serve God for us. <laughs> you, can, you can sit down. Thank you, Tseku. We, we, have to, um, we have to get rid of this religious trash thinking that, that only allows our understanding to, to uh, that only allows us to think that a pastor or a prophet or a apostle is the called of God. My goodness, this is absolute trash. God, we need to get rid of the superstar status out of the church. Goodness, you know, it's like. When you have bodyguards, can you imagine Jesus walking in here with bodyguards? I'm just saying, we need to get, I understand, I've had bodyguards before, believe it or not. <laughs> Once. <laughs> in India, and I was thankful. <laughs> Those people would have taken a piece of clothing or whatever if they could. But the anointing actually protects you, it's supposed to. No, not the body God to protect the anointing. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Okay, I think, I think we're, going, we're going somewhere. So until you realize you're called and you play a part in the, a role in the body of Christ, um, you, will, you will always doubt. As long as you have a superstar status, you're always going to feel or, or look up to someone that's a superstar. You're going to feel inferior. You're going to feel like you've got nothing to give and nothing to offer on, on the table. Um, when you begin to just step into the body of Christ, when we begin to acknowledge and see the grace and see the, the Christ shining in and through each of us, we begin to, to, to spark a brighter, brighter, brighter light. And the church actually gets to walk into its role. So I believe, I believe church is important, but I do believe it's changing. Something is changing. If I'm, I don't think I'm the first to say it, but I do feel that, that 
that the church is, that something is changing. So if you go to um, 2 Corinthians, um, is it um, 4, verse um, 5, it says, second, did I say 2nd or 1st? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 5, it says, What we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ. So the only major one is Jesus, for those who don't know that. Those who will understand it. Auntie Rose, you got that one. Auntie Rose caught that one. The only major one is Jesus. (laughs) Can you believe, you know, Jesus, we call Jesus, Jesus. But the pastor gets offended when you call him by. If you call me Bruce, you call me Bruce. <laughs> you call Jesus, Jesus. But pastor doesn't like it when you call him by his name. No, then it must be reverend. No, then it must be pastor. Well, then it must be prophet. Why am I attacking this today? I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's important. Maybe someone needs to hear it. Imagine Jesus coming. Hello, Pastor Bruce. Hello, Jesus. <laughs> I don't understand it. Anyways, stop it, Bruce. Put yourself together. Hey? <laughs> you all have to focus. <laughs> what I imagined me preaching was not this. What we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus as Lord. And... And... Um, and ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake, God who said, light, let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts. Now, this is grace. He shone in our hearts. He says, hey, no matter how dark or how you feel about not being able to bring anything to the table, or you think you've got nothing to give, God says, no, you know what? I'm going to shine in your hearts. Okay, so that's that image that I'm telling you about. So what does he shine? The light for the illumination of the knowledge of the majesty and the glory of God as it's revealed in the person, sorry, as it is manifested in the person and is revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. So we possess this treasure in earthen vessels. So while I'm looking to Jesus and seeing the person of Christ, there is a light that is shining in my heart. It's effortless. I don't try to shine my light. I don't try to, like, I mean, there is obviously uh, things we do, you know. But most, mostly it is, it is as a result of seeing Jesus, as a result of intimacy, intimacy with him. So while I'm looking to him, even with my faults and even with my mistakes, light shining out of darkness, light shining in my heart. And my ability to see that is also very important. I need to see Jesus in you and I need to see the grace in you. Okay. Amen. Amen. So you're, you're part of God's plan and purpose. What you bring is important. Okay, so let's go to Ephesians. I hope I'm helping, I'm enjoying myself. Ephesians 5, Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, I think it's John, back to, back to Bruce's tantrum, John chapter 1 says, <laughs> um, whoever has believed in him, He is given the right to be called the children of God. There is no greater privilege than to have that title. Child of God. (laughs) Son of God. So forgive us where we have led the church to believe that they are are superstars. (laughs) And that's why I love you, Orchid. if, if If I take like Orchid, for example... He's a prophet. We've spoken about it. He is, to me, one of the most exemplary, if not the most exemplary prophet right now in my life. 
awkward is just awkward. But put him in a place where he functions, he's going to give you a word straight from God. And I love it. And all of you have, have, uh, have your, your gift. Who's been prophesied over by awkward here in the church? Oh, there's more, I'm sure. But uh, who, did he tell him? And he didn't take the title, but he is a prophet. <laughs> so we honor you, awkward. Okay, so let's quickly, let's read. I don't want to take too long. But this, is, this, is, this word is a spirit word. It's a, it's a word in spirit. Um, it will, it's going to fuel your faith. It's, it's going to fuel you, your faith to understand that you're, you're part of, of a big picture. Um, verse 9, uh, chapter 4, verse 9, it says, Now he ascended. Now what can this he ascended mean, but he that had previously descended from the heights of heaven into the depths of the lower parts of the earth? Verse 10, he who descended is the same he also has ascended. Okay. Uh, then it says, verse 11, his gifts were varied. Some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. His intention. So let's read this slowly. So what are the pastors and the teachers and the evangelists and the prophets for? Let's read it slowly. His intention was for the perfecting, the full equipping of the saints, that they should do the work of ministering towards building Christ, building up Christ's body. That it might attain until we all attain, excuse me, that it might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith, in the comprehension of the knowledge of the Son of God, at really mature manhood, the completeness of personality. This is too much, actually, eh? The completeness of personality which is nothing less the standard height of Christ's own perfection. <laughs> the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ and the completeness found in Him. So God is maturing a people into what? Perfection. <laughs> he has a perfect plan. Oh, Lord, help us that we can understand stuff like this, you know. Um, I think it's Hebrews 6 that says, well, let's go, let's move on to perfection. Let's go on to advanced teaching, you know. So forgive me if this is like something new. It might be something new, but I really believe inside your heart, while you're hearing, your spirit is stirred, and it's, and it's in agreement, you know. Um, anyway. So God wants to bring us to perfection. Okay, can we do some? When last have we used the board? We're gonna, we're gonna. Okay. All right, perfection. So if I have, hopefully I can do the stall. Oh my goodness, no, I can't. Okay. Uh, Bruce, come on. I don't think I'm doing too bad. Okay, I'm trying to draw a cube. Um, I wonder if I can still do it like I did it back in school. There we go. Okay, if that's the same, 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 same, same. Okay, that means that that is a cube. They actually call it, it's a symbol of perfection. Okay. Well, what is your? It's an imaginary symbol of perfection. Seeing it from here, <laughs> but if if the same is the same on that side, it's perfect. Okay, on all sides, it's the same. Uh, it, that is, I'm going to show you. That's 
that's like a picture of, of, of the church, okay? It's a picture of the church of Jesus. It's a picture of what he wants to do. God is taking, he wants the evangelist, the teacher, the prophet, whoever, to, to serve the church, okay? To serve the church. Understanding the calling on their lives is to bring them to a place of perfection. So if you're a prophet and you prophesy, and the people in your church are not prophesying, you're not fulfilling your, your mandate. Okay? Okay? Prophecy is for a time. Okay? But the, you know it's amazing? Where I speak about seeing in part, the Bible says in John 3, from John 3 about Jesus, that he operated in the spirit without measure. Okay? So we are like children now, operating in gifts, but Jesus operated in, in, in the spirit without measure, like no limit. He had that, no limit. God is growing the church to a place of perfection. While we are children, we have gifts, and we, we should allow the, um, the church to function in the gifts, but don't park the bus at your gift. You need, we need to, to grow each other. We need to uh, rub off on each other in a sense that, okay, I'm able to see further now because I've spent time with you. I'm able to do what you do because I've spent time with you. Um, two years ago, I think I weighed 107 kilograms. I weighed 90 kilograms. Wow, Bruce, I did that by spending time with someone who's in personal training. He had a gift, okay? And so, so just by spending time with him, I learned certain things. And, and so there are gifts in the church. Um, yeah, I think you, get the, you catch the, the point. But when you, when you stay and isolate yourself, you're, we're not going to function at full capacity like God said that we would. Let's go to... Um, let's go... To Ephesians chapter 3. There we go. This is going to be good. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 3. Let's start with from verse 9. So we're going to do a bit of, a bit of Bible reading. To enlighten all men. Okay, 8 is good. To me, I'm the very least of all the saints. Um, the, this grace was granted and graciously entrusted to proclaim to the Gentiles the unending, boundless, fathomless, incalculable, and exhaustless riches of Christ. Okay? To enlighten all men, make plain to them what is the plan of the mystery <laughs> kept hidden through the ages, concealed until now in the mind of God. <laughs> it's just too much who created all things by Christ Jesus. The purpose is that through the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God, in all its infinite variety and innumerable aspects, might now be known to the angelic rulers, oh my goodness, this is, this is too much, and authorities and in the heavenly sphere. This in accordance with the terms of the eternal and timeless purpose, which he has realized and carried into effect in the person of Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom because of our faith in him we dare to have the boldness of free access and approach to God with freedom and without fear. So I ask you not to lose heart as to why I'm suffering in your behalf, for it is in an honor to you. For this reason, seeing the greatness of this plan by which you are built together in Christ, I bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus, for whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. Okay, um, verse 16. May he grant you, so this is a prayer for you. If you want it, you say to yourself, I want it. May he grant you, out of the rich treasury of his glory, to be strengthened, reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit. May Christ, through your faith, dwell, make his permanent home in your hearts. May be rooted deep in love, 
founded securely on love. Here we go. That you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints. What is the breadth? Okay, this is the picture. What is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of it? That you may really come to know through experience for yourself the love of Christ. Wow. Which far surpasses mere knowledge. And that you may be filled throughout all your being until the fullness of God may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Imagine we just closed the Bible, went home and read this for the next couple of weeks. Because <laughs> it, it's really too much. Eh? It's like it's just too much. Uh, you don't somehow hear people teach on stuff like this, but... It, but many folded wisdom of God. He says that you may comprehend what is the, the breadth, the depth, the height of it. Perfection. It's called love. It's what God wants to do through the church of Jesus Christ. What he wants to demonstrate through the church of Jesus. Through you and through me. All right, so let's let's do some, some reading. So Matthew 5, Jesus said, um, Matthew 5, let's quickly read it, Matthew 5. Verse 14. He says, you are the light. Of the world. And then he says, a city (laughs) set on a hill cannot be hidden. Okay? You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be, cannot be hidden. Now, I've already explained to you how are we the light. Okay? We are the light by doing exactly what you're doing today. Sitting here, um, some of you woke up this morning or spoke yesterday and said, we can't miss church. <laughs> so what happens is you come, you sit in here, you go through the worship, you experience Jesus, you experience, wow, this is what I'm called for. This is what I'm born for. And, and something ha- is stirring in your heart. That, that is like a moment of revival. That is like a moment of God's purpose. So you're lo- literally looking into the face of Jesus. You're seeing your plan and purpose. And boom, there's light. Okay? Boom, there's light. And then a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Do you not know that you're the city of God? Okay? Let me show you something. Hebrews 13. I'm running through 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 the verses now. And then we're going to hit the, the finish line. Hebrews 13. I should really stop apologizing for reading the Bible, eh? Hebrews 13. When you get a Hebrews 13, page back to Hebrews 12, because that's where I really wanted to go to. Verse 18. Hebrews 12, verse 18. I think this is fantastic. You have not come, as the Israelites did in the wilderness, to a material mountain that can be touched, that is ablaze with fire, and to gloom and darkness and a raging storm. Next verse, to the blast of a trumpet and a voice whose words make the listeners beg that nothing more be said to them. Keep going. For they could not bear the command that was given to them. If even a wild animal touches the mountain, it it should be stoned to death. In fact, 
so awful and terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am terrified, trembling with fear. But rather, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God. Does it say you are going to Mount Zion? Does it, what does it say? Is that past tense? Is that present tense? The future tense? Rather, you have come to Mount Zion. You have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the countless multitudes of angels. You have come. <laughs> you are the light of the world. You are a city set on a hill. You have come to Zion. <laughs> I love this. You have come to Zion. You are the city, the bride. Come on. You are the city. You are the new. <laughs> you are the church of Jesus. You are exactly what, what, what God envisioned and purposed before, before Jesus. It's you. It's you. You are the city. You are the city. You are the city of, of, of God. I think this is good stuff. <laughs> this is good stuff and excites me. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. I, you can go over to Revelation. Yes, a whole bunch of stuff needs to be fulfilled, absolutely. You go to Revelation chapter 20, 21, quickly, 21 and 22. There's a lot that still needs to happen in the body of Christ. But I grew up saying this, this quote um, when hearing it. The whole world is yet to see what one man can do totally, completely sold out to God. I was thinking, yeah, but imagine the church. <laughs> imagine a church completely sold out. Imagine the people of God all, like when Edwin and I were talking, with all of us with all eggs in, in one basket. Like, imagine what that would look like. If everyone that, that it, let's just imagine us, <laughs> just the few of us here, if all of us were completely sold out. Like, if we, if we took an offering this morning of everything, all your hopes, plans, and dreams, <laughs> lay invested in the plans and purposes of God. Imagine, imagine what we would do, <laughs> and we're going to do it. We're going to do it. And there'll be more of us soon. <laughs> There's going to be more of us that say, yes, I'm bringing what I can. I'm bringing it to the table. And we, we're, going to, we're going to see it. Amen. So, okay. I said Revelation 21. Quickly read 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. Let's go. If any person is in Christ, he is a new creation. Okay? You have come to Mount Zion, the city, the new Jerusalem. Okay? You have come to Mount Zion. You have come to the city. It says, so therefore... If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. The new and the fresh has come. So we read Revelation 21. Don't get caught in eschatology now. Just read <laughs> this. Verse 1. I saw a new heaven, a new earth, for the former had passed away. <laughs> I love this. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. I see a new heaven and new earth. The old had passed, has passed away. There no longer existed any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, arrayed like a bride and beautified and adored for her husband. And he said, verse 3, listen. Then I heard a mighty voice from the throne and I perceive the abode of God is with men. He will live among them, and they shall be his people. 
Okay. Okay, and this, this, the next couple of verses is just for fun. And then we're going to wrap it up. Verse um, 10. Then in the Spirit, God conveyed me away to a vast and lofty mountain. Whoa. Okay, you have come to the mountain. And exhibited to me the holy city of Jerusalem. Do you not know you have come to that city? Descending out of heaven from God, clothed in God's glory, in all its splendor and radiance, the luster of it, luster of it resembling rare and most precious jewel, like jasper. Okay, then it speaks about it at massive high walls, 12 large gates, 12 angels. Next verse. On the side, three, three gates. Okay, west gate. Verse 14. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them the 12 names of the 12 apostles. Okay, just listen to this, verse 16. The city lies in a square, <laughs> its length being the same as its width. He measured the city with, with his reed. Its length and width and height are the same. That's cool, eh? That's what I kind of showed you. If you don't get it, you get it. So the city, it's, it's length and width and height. Same, it's like a weird looking city, eh? <laughs> no, it just means perfection. God bringing, it doesn't mean a box. <laughs> he's, trying to, he's conveying something in the spirit that you are. You're the city of God. You have a role to play in the kingdom. I really didn't say what I wanted to, to say this morning, but I, say, I said what was necessary. Some of you need to leave the baggage in your life. Unnecessary baggage that's keeping you from, from really walking in the purposes and plans of God. You, we need to put it down. The past of things of people, it cycles. People that hurt you, people, things that you've lost. Whatever it is, and you, you just you just. Like how Paul says, uh, it's just, if I compare the, to, to the privilege of knowing Christ, it, knowing Christ outweighs everything. Yeah. Because you need to run, you've got a race to run. You've got a race to run. You've got a calling. You've got something that you need to walk in. In the church, the body of Christ. You know, like, this is just a small example. But, um, yeah, I just, I just feel it's time. It's time that we, we, we grab the Word of God and we just run with it wholeheartedly. And uh, we, we again say, here I am, Lord, use me. And, uh, and we do it. We're going to see it. We're going to see it. Thank you, Jesus. All right, am I done? Thank you. Let's go to let's close in Second Corinthians chapter eleven. So you should really do yourself a favor and go read read Revelation twenty one, twenty two, Galatians four, Galatians five, Matthew five, uh, the whole book of Ephesians, <laughs> and uh, yeah, read read the whole Bible. Just skip Leviticus. Skip Leviticus, eh? Yeah. Just, you'll thank me later. Skip Leviticus. <laughs> Don't read that. No, I'm joking. I endured Leviticus the other day. Goodness. Um, I said we're going to 2 Corinthians 11. There's a song that I'm going to sing. I think Jonathan Butler sings it. YouTube it for homework as well. It says, falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever, ever done. Wow.
Holding in love. Imagine I had someone on the keys there. Yeah, Jesus. The best thing that we've ever done. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Verse, um, verse, verse 23 says, For I received from the Lord himself, did I say 2 Corinthians or 1 Corinthians? I meant 1 Corinthians. It's the same in the Spirit. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I received from the Lord himself that which I passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was treacherously delivered up, and while he was betrayed, was in progress, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this to call me to remembrance. Okay. I'm going to King James it quickly. Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supper, he said, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So when in, in um, Matthew 24, the disciples go to this temple and they say, yeah, Jesus, look how beautiful all of this is. Jesus said, you break us down. He said, in three days, I will rebuild it. And he was talking about himself, the cross and the resurrection. But not only just himself, the church of Jesus. Okay? And so do you not know that you are the temple of the living God? Okay? Do you not know that you are... Oh, my goodness. And what Jesus wants to do through the many-sided wisdom of God through the church, like building up, jointing in. So when we take communion, yeah, it's for me, it's for my sins, it's for my, my, um, my sickness, it's for everything on my personal inheritance, but it is also for my, my role and my position in the body of Christ. So to remember is also to remember but to remember is to, so that's why it says, whenever you come together, take communion, take it, because you're doing this in remembrance of me. It's a sign of, of unity in the body of Christ. I think it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. All right. Amen. All right. Let's pray, and then we'll have communion. Lord Jesus, I thank you. Right now, I know there's people right now in this, in this church just sitting here, maybe also desiring a personal word and desiring that you speak to them directly. Lord, I pray for a, for a manifestation of your presence. Like that scripture that says that they will know practically for themselves the love of Christ. I pray for a practical experience of the love of Christ for themselves. The love of Christ that pulls us out of our insecurities, out of the fear of man, out of what people might or might not think of me, out of the opinions of the past, of the mistakes we've made. The love of Christ that, that pulls us out of, out of the, the baggage of the past, and seats us in a dignified place next to Christ. <laughs> Join seated with Christ. Lord, that, that, w- that we'll all know what that's like to be above, above the, can you say, the opinions of the dogs. <laughs> and every opinion that we believe about ourselves, the lies that keep us from blooming, the lies that keep us from, from giving and walking in the calling that you've called us. Lord, as we're about to take communion, I pray that forgiveness will rule in our hearts over the words that's been spoken over our lives, over, over the times where, where there's been, um, where we've trusted, where we've invested ourselves and been disappointed. 
Um, and Lord, we, we look to you. Ultimately, Lord, you are the one. You are the only one that has it all together. You are the only one um, that we can look up to and follow wholeheartedly and pursue. And I, I pray um, that the manifestation of this word today, well, the fruit thereof, will, will be evident in our lives that, that um, as they look, as we all look, into the glory of, of the, the face of Jesus. That by looking, that will automatically fulfill our role in the body of Christ and in this world that is in desperate need of, of your love and your light. We thank you for that. Thank you for, right now, we want to thank you for your presence that is so evident and so real, like when the disciples met you after the resurrection. They didn't know it was you, and their hearts were burning. Lord, my heart is burning. I know you're here. I know that you're here. And I pray that everybody will experience that same presence, and that it will be intensified as they go home, and it will be intensified as they, as they go to sleep tonight or whatever, that the presence of Jesus will be so real and that they will not know you in theory, but in manifestation, in tangibility, in practice, in person. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen.